Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how I've painted a set of British infantry from the late 1800s, in this case fighting in Afghanistan. The miniatures used are Perry Miniatures plastic box set. This kit's got two types of helmet included. Referring to the manual, I've used the type meant for Afghanistan as opposed to the type with the wrappings that's meant for Sudan, Burma, etc. Aside from that, I've made aware there may be a few historical inaccuracies in my assembly choices. So you're meant to have the guy holding the bugle and the drum. You're meant to have the same man carrying both. And this arm holding the rifle at rest that I've used here. That's actually a different bayonet type that's reserved for officers. That aside, I've built and painted these using Osprey's The Men That Would Be Kings Wargaming Rules as a guide, meaning they're organised into three squads of 12. Though there's a little line marking on their bases, like so. Meaning each group of 12 has a leader figure, so they're these ones that don't have the standard helmets on, like so. And there's one or two other figures per unit, just like the musicians and the banner, that just add interest, but don't do anything else game-wise. Referring again to the manual, I decided to base this set on this guy pictured from the 66 Regiment. Uh, this guide should still be useful for the others, because it's mostly just... The same or similar sort of colours in different places. Since I only built the one Bannerman, I decided to use the regimental colour. We can imagine that the Queen's colour is tucked away somewhere safely, or the man carrying it elsewhere, because this obviously isn't the full regiment. That's enough preamble for now, so I'll get on with it and show you the painting. The paints you'll need for this project are as follows. You need XV88, Screaming Skull, Steel Legion Drab, Zandri Dust, Eschen Grey, Doomball Brown, Mournfang Brown, Orthorin Grey, White Scar, Bugman's Glow, Kislev Flesh, Lead Belcher, Stormhost Silver, Retributor Armour, Mephiston Red, Abaddon Black, a few optional colours, Tal Light Ochre, Rhinox Hide, Dawn Yellow, Squeak Orange, Troll Slayer Orange, and Dawnstone. We also need several washes. These are Seraphim Sepia. Agrax Earthshade, Noln Oil, and Right Clan Flesh Shade. The models have been assembled as they are out of the box with regular plastic glue. To base them, I've used these 25mm MDF discs that I got from Amazon. I've then used PVA glue and Woodland Scenics fine ballast. Any sort of sand will do, just to give a bit of texture on the top. After that, I've primed them with Army Painter Matte White, but again, any matte white spray paint will do. First step is to give the bases a coat of XV88, thin down a little bit more than usual, just so it gets over all the sand. And you're going to want to use an old brush for this rather than one of the ones that you like, and just slap it on. Maybe do another coat if it's looking a little bit too thin, and then give it plenty of time to dry afterwards. Before we do anything else, we're just going to give the dog a base coat of Doomball Brown. Next, just dry brush Screaming Skull over the sand on the base. Now 
As you can see, I have also dry brushed the dog screaming skull. The next stage is just to wash all of the sand with seraphim sepia. Give it a generous amount, make sure it just gets into all the recesses. For the next stage we'll be using Steel Legion Drab and applying that as a base coat on all of the khaki parts of the uniform, so that'll be most of the model. Again, we don't need a terrible amount of precision for this, so we're just using one of the older brushes that's lost its point. Going to want to get the helmet as well with the same colour. You can avoid areas like the skin and the rifle, but we'll be doing those later, so it's no big deal. Next with Zandri Dust, just do essentially a heavy dry brush over all those khaki areas of the uniform, leaving a little bit of the Steel Legion drab visible in the recesses, and then that will be the last colour on the main parts of the uniform for now, and then we'll move on to the details and such. Now we're moving on to some details, so you're going to want to use one of the brushes that you actually like. We're using Eschen Grey, and for that we're just going to put that on the putties on the lower, lower legs. We're also going to use that to colour in the great coat bundle just on the back there. and these pouches just on the front of the waist there. Also, while you're at it, the dog can have a little bit of that just on his nose. Any wooden areas, just paint Doom Ball Brown. So it's mostly going to be the main body of the rifle, but also things like the drumsticks on the drummer and the banner pole, if anybody is carrying a banner. We're going to carry on by doing the boots and the belts. So for that we're going to use Mourn Fang Brown and a fine point brush. So along with his boots, you want to do his belt on his waist, this pouch at the back under the bundle, there's a few straps on the bundle itself. This, I think it's a water bottle here on his right hip. And don't forget the strap on the rifle itself. And the strap that's holding the water bottle. So while well, you've got the Mournfang Brown open, just give the dog a little dry brush across the top of his head and his back. Because he's been a good boy this video and he deserves it. Let's try and get his ears a little bit as well. The last step for the uniform detail base coats is also in grey, which we're just going to be using this large bag on the left hip here, as well as the straps that hold it, and just these lapels on the front of the body here. If you've assembled the guy with his arm in a sling, also use also in grey for that sling. Now the only drum from this set I painted in an earlier batch of figures, so this is one that's actually complete, but I'll just show you what colours I used. The main body of the drum is towel light ochre. The rims here are um, fist and red, and then squig orange over the top of that. The skin of the drum and the ropes on the side and hanging down are XV88, and then screaming skull over the top of those. Now we come to the stage that I personally find the most satisfying. Going to take some Agrax Earthshade and a wash brush and apply it generously over the whole model just to shade all of those uniform parts that we've painted.
you can put it over the whole model except for the base because the other parts we're going to come back in and paint later anyway. Don't need to worry about being too precise. And this is the stage where it all starts to really come together visually. And while we're there, the dog also be shaded at the same time. Again, I'm just going to do the entire dog except for the base. Now take some white scar and re-highlight those white cloth areas, including the sling. And the lapels and this bag down here. At this stage you can use the base colours to re-highlight the other uniform areas. I haven't, but if you want to do that, go ahead and do it. And with that the uniform is done, and we can move on to the skin, which will be base coating with Buttons Glow, just on the face and hands there. For the next stage of the skin, we're going to be using Kislev Flesh. We're going to cover most of the skin with that, just leaving the Bugman's Glow showing in some of the recesses. Before we carry on with the skin, we're going to take a second to use Retributor Armour, just to pick out the few gold details on these models, so that would be the hilt of the sword here. and the bugle, if you've made the model with the bugle, and the little top of the banner pole. Since we've done both the gold and the skin at the same time, we can shade them both using a Reichland Flesh Shade Wash. And this time we're just going to make sure not to get that on the other areas that we've already painted. As the last stage for the skin, we are just going to go back with the Kislev Flesh and just re-highlight a few of the more prominent areas, so just the backs of the hands, noses, a little on the cheeks and jaw lines as well. That should do it. The next step is to move on to the metal areas. So we're going to use Lead Belcher. And we're going to put that on all the metal areas of the gun. So that's the bayonet. And just this part along the top here. And down here. We can also use that for the blade of the sabre. And if anyone's got the revolvers, you can paint the body and just carefully get the handle as well. Now, I've done the metal in all of these models. The way I've assembled this chap, he doesn't have any metal on him. But he's not going to get left out during this stage because before we do the wash, we're just going to paint Mephiston red on the decorative rope and the tassels that are on the banner pole. Again, if you've assembled the guy with the bugle, you can do the ropes and tassels on the bugle in the fist and red at this stage as well. Another wash stage now. This time we're using Nolm oil. And all we're going over is the bits that we've just done. So that's just the metal on the rifle. Getting the bayonet as well. The blade of the sabre. And the revolvers. And any red parts, like the ropes and tassels, on the banner and or the bugle. 
We're now ready to move on to the last stage of metals, which is taking some Stormhurst silver and just giving a nice shiny highlight on the bayonets. And do the saber blade as well, just along the edge. There we are. Not doing this for any of the other metal parts. Literally just on the bayonets to make them stand out. At this stage, the miniatures are pretty much done. The only thing that remains is to paint their hair. And this is where we're going to put a little bit of variety in. Now, the first thing I usually do for this stage is I separate them out based on how much hair they've got. So most of the guys will just have the hair on their head. Some will have little moustaches and some will have full beards. So I'm just going to beard guy over here. Clean shaven guys over here. He's got a beard. Moustache. Clean shaven. This way I can have a couple of guys with beards with different colours since they're going to be the most visible and the majority of the guys with just the close hair will be black or brown haired and the dog can be put aside at this stage. So I've got three dudes with beards, four with little moustaches and five that are clean shaven. And what I'm going to do now is organise them again based on what base colour I want to use for the hair. Now, if you're not really interested in invariant hair colours, just do all hair about in black, and that's fine. Rhinox hide is what I use for the brown hair. You can use some of the other browns that you used for the uniforms, but otherwise mix them, mixing them up a bit, so then it's not the exact same brown as like the rifles or the straps, for instance. Now, one of the bearded guys, I'm gonna, he's gonna be ginger. I've done a ginger beard before and I liked it and that's good. The officer is going to have a grey beard and the other bearded guy can be blonde, why not? And then I'm going to distribute the plain haired and the moustached guys evenly between brown and black. And then move on to actually painting them. Now the first group of guys, just going to do their hair a bad and black, and as I said earlier, if you're not particularly interested in doing all the different hair colours, then this is probably the best option to just finish them up quickly and get them on the table. The chaps with the moustaches, just going to want to... Carefully with the detail brush. So for the brown haired guys, we're going to do the same thing we just did, but with Ryan Oxhide instead of a bad and black. Now most of them will have a little bit of hair visible just at the temple there. And something just in between the back of the helmet and the collar. And of course, any of them that have moustaches. Just dot that in carefully at this stage as well. And the brown head guys are also complete. The bearded chaps were each painted with a base coat, a highlight, and a wash. So I'll just quickly run through them now. The grey bearded chap was based with Eshin Grey. I'm highlighting now with Dawnstone, and he'll have a wash of non oil. For the blonde hair, that's a base coat of Tau Light Ochre, which I will now highlight with a little bit of Dawn Yellow. And then the wash after this will be Seraphim Sepia.
So the ginger chap's beard was base coated with squig orange. I'm going to give it a little highlight of troll flare orange, and because that's very bright, a wash of Agrax Earth shade just to dull it back down to a slightly more sensible colour. I photocopied the regimental colour from the 66 regiment out of the manual that comes in the box. Just giving that some PVA glue, wrapped it around the banner and crinkling it a little bit to get some realistic movement in there. And with that, that is the whole set done. Now this is uh, the first time I've done a painting video like this, so please let me know what you liked, what you don't like. I'm going to continue working on my setup, figuring out things like, you know, where to put things, focus, making sure my thumb's not in the way all the time, stuff like that. But yeah, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you next time I do one of these.